Well, maybe just to get started and sort of irrespective of its financial, uh, comparative financial success, what were sort of the lessons that you took from Drive or that you chose to sort of ignore from the experience of making that movie that you wanted to sort of apply as you were moving on to this movie? Um, nothing. I mean, I make the kind of films I make and the only rule I have is that I budget them to accordingly what I think that they can survive on. So some movies are a little more expensive than others and films are less expensive than others. Of course, that's why it was a little more expensive than what I was used to having, because it could sustain that. Only God Forgives is much cheaper because it needs to be. Other than that, I make the kind of films I make. <laughs> well. Um you know, I've, I've heard you talk about, you know, from the time that you met Ryan Gosling to sort of the, the, the extent of the collaboration that you guys enjoyed on Drive. Um, I guess how much do you feel like uh, your, your collaboration has become like sort of second nature or even first nature now in terms of being able to put him exactly where you want him to be and communicate what you want communicated, I guess? Well, it's... Directing can be very intimate. It's very much about trust and willing to go on a journey together. You know, I like the collaboration of that. You know, I like to, I shoot my films in chronologically order because of that. Because I like to see it unfold. I like to see how it changes. I like to see the ability to transform it with the actors and the cameraman and those people that I have on set. And then in post-production, I continue that transformation with the editor and then the sound and the grading and everything. It's a constant evolution. And of course, it's about wanting to do something together. And it's very much using your, your collaborators as partners to tell the stories. Sure, sure. Well, um, how literal is this movie supposed to be taken? Because, I mean, it seems very imagistic. Um, uh, but it also seems sort of fully operating on a more of a metaphorical level than it is like a like a specific narrative level. It's meant to take in any way you like it, because that's when art becomes interesting. You know, art is an ex it's an individual experience in the end. That's when it becomes very satisfying. And my best offering to you is to show you this, and you to say, you either love it or you hate it, but you're never gonna forget it. Sure, sure. Well, well do you, um, well, well, but when you're conceiving, particularly something like this that has um, such a meditative quality about it, um, are you thinking uh, sort of about the logistics of, of the story when, you, when you're sort of assembling it, when you're shooting it, or are you thinking about sort of like what larger ideas you wanna execute through the visuals that you're creating? Well, it's a combination, but because I make very silent films at the moment, it's all about the visuals having to tell the story. It's a great exercise, actually. It's a very pleasurable exercise. It almost goes back to the origin of cinema when it was just a piano and a camera. It's very pure. It's also very tricky and very challenging because we're so used to not making films like that or seeing films like that. So to me, that was one of the goals, especially coming off the success of Drive, I knew I had to make something completely different, you know, in order to reinvent for my next movie, because then I will not be controlled. I will not be defined. If people say left, I will go right, because out of respect for an audience, it has to be a new experience every time. 